Hey guys, it's me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week two of the Pokemon Premier League. This week we are facing Numnexus and his Toronto Tyrants. Um, I've never had like a, a interaction with Nexus before, um, but I just want to start off this video by saying he's an incredibly awesome guy. Um, getting to know him a bit better the last few days, chatting to him on Discord, it's been a pleasure. So I'm really looking forward to this game. Um, last week I edited and uploaded my video too early before all the graphics were done, so this week we have got a lovely graphic to highlight the matchup to you which should be on the screen right now. I'm not overly confident going into this game, I feel like Nexus has got a lot of things that I have good defensive answers to but that defensive answer seems to be one Pokemon which we will go over uh, shortly in the team breakdown we've got for this week. Um, but in case you can't see the screen right now, Nexus has got Deoxys Speed which for some reason is allowed still, uh, Coquavel, Scizor, Terra Ghost Gengar, Sandy Sharks, uh, Volcanion, Regidrago, Brute Bonnet, Bramble and Terra Vivion with Flying, Fighting and Ground Terra. Um, very scary team, a lot of threats, um, you know, Coquavel and Scizor are notorious for setting up and you know, either hitting with priority or boosting speed and just being deadly breakers and end game sweepers. Um, and they're things I don't really have a great answer to, um, along with Terra Gengar just, you know, being terrifying. Just a lot of threats on my opponent's team. So definitely a hard game to uh, to go into in week two. But let's see the six that I have brought that will hopefully take us to a 2 0 start to the season. The first Pokemon on the team sheet this week is going to be Typhoon, the Latios. A very standard set, once again, nothing special needs to be done here with Latios this week. Uh, we are running the Soul Dew item to give us them really strong Draco Meteors and Luster Purges. Uh, we are running a Timid Nature with max special attack and max speed with the four remaining EVs in special defense. Now, originally, for some reason, I didn't have Latios on my initial six, um, but after kind of reviewing the team, and Nexus's team, we realised that actually his Dragon Switching is a Gramble, um, and potentially Scizor as well. And any chip on Scizor for my team is incredible because that thing is a huge threat to a lot of my offensive mons. Um, and I really struggled just to kind of like switch into it. So actually, bringing kind of like a, a Latios where I can just spam Draco Meteor and Luster Purge was really good, uh, sort of for breaking Nexus's team. And that's kind of why I didn't really need to do anything else with the move set. We've got for flip turn, uh, which is obviously for momentum, and we've got recover too, just to help longevity. This thing's a really good switch into uh, Nexus's Volcanion, so recover could be really nice to help extend that longevity. And like I said, it's a really good breaker against this team, so the longer I can keep Latios around, the better. The second Pokemon on the team sheet this week is going to be Galarian Moltres, making its debut for the Norwich Skitty. I'll be honest, this was the first Pokemon on the team sheet this week. Uh, for two reasons. One, because it has an incredibly good matchup against Nexus. And two, Nexus really wanted to see it do some work this season, so who better to do it against than in himself? Um, I looked at quite a few different sets for this this week. Potentially Choice Scarf, Choice Specs. Um, but in the end, we settled on Weakness Policy with Double Dance in Agility and Nasty Plot with Hurricane and Fiery Wrath as the two offensive moves. Um, Fiery Wrath and Hurricane hit the whole draft for at least neutral if not super effective damage on Nexus' side. Um, with the weakness policy in Berserk, I have a minimum of a plus three if I'm hit by a super effective hit. Nexus has a lot of things that can hit me super effective as well. He has the whole Sandy Shocks, he has potentially Ice Beam or Thunderbolt on Deoxys, he has Dazzling Gleam on his Gengar, um, potentially Ice Spinner on Quavel if it's not set up. There's lots of things that I can get the weakness policy off here. Uh, those moves will probably all hit me into under 50% as well, which is where Berserk comes in and, you know, will give me the extra plus one. If I'm really feeling frisky, you know I can click Nasty Plot as well to go to a plus five, all in one turn, which would be hilarious. Um, but yeah, this thing here will act as either a really good mid-game breaker or a late-game cleaner slash sweeper, um, because I think possibly one of the best switchings to this is going to be Gramble, which I feel, if it does come, is going to be a switch in to I, I'm going to put switching in air you know air quotes uh, switch into Latios as well so it should be fairly easy to wear that down and really give Moltres the time it needs to shine. The third Pokemon on the team this week is going to be Blastoise. 
Blastoise had such a fantastic showing in week one and flip turn was just an absolute nightmare to Jack. Unfortunately this week Blastoise isn't going to be able to click flip turn so freely because as I've mentioned before Nexus does have a Volcanion with water absorb. Um, but one thing I haven't mentioned is Nexus's team is very weak to ground types. And when I say weak, not everything is like weak to it, but he doesn't have any really good resistances or immunities outside of Brute Bonnet um, and Vivion, if that comes. Um, so I undenard with Blastoise because I didn't know if I really wanted to make it a specially defensive mon or a physically defensive mon. Reason being, this thing physically defensive helps check Quable, as well as also Sizzle. However, this is also my best answer to the Volcanion, which I would probably want to be more specially defensive with. In the end, we decided to run physically defensive because I kind of needed some way of stopping a Scizor slash Coquable that was getting out of hand with setup. So due to that, we've kind of gone max defense and EVs with max HP, a little bit in attack and special defense just to round up my bulk and do that extra little bit of damage. Um, but Haze is there obviously to get rid of the setup, which he has plenty of on his team. And Resto Chesto is there to kind of help the longevity, but also help me clear any burns that I might get from Hydra Steam or Scald, uh, or potentially uh, if there's Toxic on any of his mons, or you know Paralysis, any kind of status, I can get rid of that too. Just to help me keep this thing around a bit more to help pivot around a Scizorical Quable that could be a nuisance otherwise. The fourth Pokemon this week is Tinkerton. Um, a very similar set to week one against Jack just a small change to the EVs and the moveset. So we are running the Moral Breaker ability with Play Rough Knockoff, Thunder Wave and Stealth Rock. Outside of Sandy Shocks, Thunder Wave is pretty free and Nexus has got quite a few fast Pokemon on his draft in Deoxys Speed, Quable if it starts clicking Aqua Step and the Gengar. So spamming Thunder Wave around is going to be really nice. Um, Stealth Rocks is going to be really nice chipping down Nexus's team. I've already mentioned that, you know, Moltres and Latios can do a lot of damage to him. So having the rocks when I'm forcing switches is going to be really nice and help chip down his team to the point where I could potentially look for an endgame clean uh, up with either Moltres or an unnamed Pokemon. Um, so Moltres, sorry, not Moltres, Tinkerton is just kind of here to be annoying to Nexus, to get up rocks, potentially knock off an item or two and disrupt the team to the point where I can then kind of take initiative and look to clean up the game with one of my potential end game sweepers. The fifth Pokemon on the team this week is none other than Gliscor and it's not your usual Gliscor set that you're used to seeing. Definitely nothing like the set we brought against Jackie in week one. Uh, we are running the choice band Gliscor this week. And the reason we're doing that is because as I've mentioned already when we're talking about Blastoise, Nexus really struggles to switch in to ground types. Nexus also has the Sandy Shocks, which is an incredibly free switch into Gliscor any time it hits the field if he decides to bring it. His best Earthquake Resist is going to be the Brute Bonnet, but I can U-turn or Jewel Wing beat that thing, if I predict it, to do big damage or just claim the knockout, in which case Earthquake is then even freer against his team. Um, we are running Hypercutter because he does have an Intimidate user in the Granbull. Um, so not having my attack reduced is going to be really useful. Plus I don't really see where a potential Toxic uh, or Poison is going to come from. I don't think anyone's really going to want to try and Poison a Gliscor anyway. So I figured Hypercutter would probably be more useful uh, this way. We are running enough speed to outspeed Quable. I believe that's what it is. I can't remember what else he has on his team that could be speed creeped here. But... It's there to basically outspeed what needs to be outsped. We're max attack just to make them earthquakes as strong as possible because Gliscor's attack stat isn't the highest. Um, but we also have a little bit in HP and 8 in defense to just kind of help take a hit from Sizzle. Or Quavel a bit better than I would otherwise. I'm still fairly bulky on the physically defensive side which is, is nice. So it's like a pseudo physical defensive check that can dish out a lot of damage in return. A set not many of you might have really expected, but actually on paper this set looks set to do so well against this team. The sixth and final Pokemon for this week is none other than Zeb Striker, Timu Pookie. I miss you, I love you. Um, Zeb Striker is obviously one of my Terra Captains and is my Terra Captain for this week. Hopefully I've remembered to put a Terra sort of art thing on, on the team builder page this time. 
Um, but it's got an incredibly good matchup against Nexus. That was This was also, along with Moltres, one of the first things we noticed. Initially, we were thinking Terra Water to help with Sandy Shocks. Um, but actually, we realized that High Horsepower with um, Expert Belt does pretty much the same as Terra Water Terra Blast does. So we actually opted to go with Terra Fire because this helped me take on Sizzle better. And it also meant I had like another check. I say check to it because this is a Zeb Striker. It's got no defense whatsoever. But, you know, Terrifier then resists both Stab of Sizzle. So it's something that can come and revenge kill that thing. Um, once I click Flame Charge, I outspeed the entire team uh, of Nexus. Unless he has Choice Scarfed Deoxys Speed. Which would be an absolutely bonkers bring just for a Zeb Striker. So that won't come. So once I get a flame charge off, this thing outspeeds the entire draft uh, that Nexus can have, unless this Quaval has got two Aqua Steps off. Um, we're now running the Supercell Slam, High Horsepower, Volt Switch, and Flame Charge. These moves here cover a lot of his team. Uh, Brute Bonnet could be an issue for this, um, but I would be Terrifier. He would also have to fear the Sap Zipper. He wouldn't want to give me those attack boosts. He'd probably just click, you know, well, he might not even click Spore. Um, but he could potentially click Sucker Punch to try and take me out that way. But Zeb Striker, if Moltres fails or Moltres breaks, then Zeb Striker has got the ability to clean up Nexus's team after a flame charge. Um, that would be quite wild, to be honest, because let's face it, everyone wants to see Zeb Striker do some work this season. So these are the six that I've elected to bring against Nexus. Let's see how they perform in the battle. Okay, everyone, we're here with our game against Nexus. Um, only three days later than planned. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned, but basically we're going to play Sunday night. Uh, Nexus fairly wanted to watch Worlds. Uh, so we ranged for Monday night, and then Nexus's power went out. <laughs> so then we have just arranged to play now. Stupid me made the competition for AM. Luckily it had finished, so I've now been able to make another room for now. So... Um, yeah, I'm here against Nexus. Um, I've forgotten his team name, but I'll do it in the team builder section anyway and go over all that. Not anywhere near as confident. I mean, I'm pretty sure I say this every week, actually. Like, I don't feel like my matchup is great. Um, he has a lot of threats. Um, so we'll see We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not overly confident with, with the matchup here. He's got Terra Gengar. Terra Ghost Gengar, Sizzle, like Deoxys Speed. Um, I haven't bought removal so that could be a big mistake we'll, we'll see and find out but um let me let's just say i'm now searching hopefully he doesn't have deoxys speed that would be uh that would be nice but i don't know if he will um i don't know what uh let's go for some kieran music i don't know what the song this is um, right, Nexus is searching, so we're going to go straight into the game. I've got my team written, I've got my calcs up. No, we have got two changes this week, actually, as you can see in the mons. We've got uh, Zeb Striker and Glaring Moltres in. Now, I really want Glaring Moltres to do work here, because Nexus was so excited when I drafted this thing. So I want to do him justice, but I also want to 6 0 him with it. Um, if you haven't seen the team build, I recommend you go back and look at it. Okay, he's literally bought every threat. He brought the Gramble. That's so annoying because Gramble is like his only fairy switch in. But look how free Draco Meteor is once that thing goes. Look how free my Latios is when this when that Gramble is dead. I don't think it will switch into um, Luster Purge very well, especially if I get a Spadef Death Drop. So he's got DOS, he's got Gramble. So no Brute Bonnet. Um, quite a Quavel. is a threat. Sizzle. See what I mean? They're like I have defensive sizzle at Blastoise, but he's got so many. Like it's here for so many different things, uh, which is annoying. And not Tink, Volcanion. So like I have no Volcanion switchings in my team other than Blastoise. I have no real sizzle checks other than Blastoise. I could have brought Terra Water. Um, what's its face? <coughs> Excuse me. What's its face? Um, Vile Plume. Oh, I didn't. He didn't bring Sandy Shocks, which means actually he has absolutely no resists to Supercell Slam. Um, which is crazy. So I think I lead off with Tink. Um, he could lead Deoxys. 
Deoxys actually just wipes this this team once Gramble's weakened um, at plus two. So I, I am weak this policy as well. So if he's a defensive Gramble, I might be able to take a hit. Uh, good luck, have fun. Nexus. Tink might have been the wrong lead. Yochi, who's that? So he does lead Dio. So he might set up spikes. Um, here's pressure. Does he taunt? I am Mold Breaker. I could Thunder Wave. If he taunts me, is that the end of the world? Like, do I get a free T Wave on this? T Wave's free, he hasn't got. So, I mean, this must be a hazard set, right? Because he hasn't got his. He hasn't got his Sandy Shots. Um, and he can't really do a lot to me. So I think I'm just going to click my Thunder Wave button. He withdraws. So this is a free paralysis. I imagine it's going to be, yeah, Volcanion. Power on this will be nice. Okay, so we do land it. Um, last choice is my switch. As is Latios, kind of. So I am recover on this. Um, I resist both his stab. I could just click the Draco slash Luster Purge move. Um, I also banded on Gliscor and Earthquake goes crazy against him here. It's absolutely crazy. Um, I wonder if I go Latios and just click the Draco or Luster Purge button. So we'll, we'll go Latios because I feel like I can't go to Blastoise because that is my Quavel answer. Um, not could have been nice too. Just getting chip on this thing would have been nice. The way he brought it in makes me think he's not boots. Um, he clicks flame for her, and that does very little damage. Um, so does he go? I just clicked Luster Purge. Right, and then flip turn out. Like I think that's what I do. If I can kill this thing, I will swap Latios for it because that then makes Blastoise much freer for the Coquable. Um, I'm annoyed I took Reflect off my. Uh, what's it called? I took Reflect off my Tinkerton now, which is annoying. Um, he draws. Last Purge is going to do a lot of damage here. Like, Deoxys can... Okay, he doesn't do Deoxys. Does he go Sizzle? He goes Gramble. So if I can get a Spadef drop... How much does this do? Is he AB? He's, he's not AB. I'll get the Spadef drop, which is huge. Um, so, what can... So if I have Latios, I'm literally max speed. Gramble. Uh, max speed. Jolly. 207. 207 times 1.5 is what? Uh, calculator. So hang on, are you max? Luster Purge does 73 to 86 to max. So if he's he's got to be AB, like he's not. I'm just clicking Luster Purge again. Like he's not Scarf, so. Um, Latios is a threat. That thing's chipped, which means I'm going to do so much better. Now if I click Draco, I should have clicked Draco, really. He has pressure, actually. I didn't think about that. Um, now, what does this thing do to me? Do I get a Death Drop again? I do. Um, how much does this thing do if he's Life Orb? Deoxys. Speed. Only offensive. So knockoff will kill. Uh, I think I'm at 240. This is if he's life orb. If he's not life orb, I live. So I am at what? Uh, I'm at 80%. So knockoff is a roll. Um, Ice beam is also a roll if he is life orb. How much did Luster Purge just do? He's got to be. He's got a lot of HP in this thing um, because that Luster Purge did. He's max HP, which makes me think he's not offensive. So I'm going to click Draco. Um, this could be a mistake, but he clicks Ice Beam. 
I live. Don't miss Draco. Okay, we hit. Deoxys is dead. Deoxys is 100%. Though. I like crit him. Uh, crit didn't matter because I got the spin drop. So Deoxys is dead. That's insane. Um, Latios is a huge problem too. Deoxys is dead. Which means Tinkerton is now free. Uh, for stuff. Um, he can't outspeed me unless he is Scarfed. Gengar's a speed type. So this means Tink is now better for Gengar. And I have the Moltres. Still. So Moltres endgame is looking good. Uh, Gramble is not in... So Gramble hasn't got a KO, but it's half. Um, Moltres, you got oh no, Tinkerton is oh no, Zeb Strike is oh no. I think if he's... If I was him, I would go into the uh, Volcanion. Personally. Um, he has World Cup. What's that? Here's Gengar. I'm going straight into Tinkerton. Straight Tink. Not even thinking. I mean, I could use this to um, set up with three Terra Fairies. Like, this might kill. If he specs, then it might very well kill. Um, but. My. Do I. So he's max HP, max for death, right? On. The Shadow Ball. How much does this do? Damage. So I am Citrus, so I, I take a hit. He didn't get the spin F drop, which is nice. Um, do I flip T Wave here? What did I paralyze before? Um, Volcanion. I paralyzed Volcanion. Do I get my rocks up? Or do I click Knock? What's his removal? His removal is Quack. Now if I knock, I get rid of his item. I think this is a roll to kill as well, based on the hate the damage that did. Knock is free. Um, Stealth Rocks would be nice. I think I click knock. He withdraws. So what do I what do I induce to here? Steam out. Okay. I think I get my rocks up on this, and then I go Latios and just click Luster Purge or something. Rocky Helmet, okay. That's fine. Um, or I go into Latios and click Recover. So I'm going to set my rocks up. Like, if he wants to predict, then that's fine. I don't know if I'll live a hit, to be fair, but the chip on this and stealth rocks on everything else is really going to help. Um, how much does Latios do to this now? Two Volcanion. It's a roll to kill. That's if it if it's max HP. Do I go choice band Gliscor? Yeah, I go I go Gliscor after this. Max HP. If he's max fizz death, then fair. Um he withdraws. He predicted something. Um, but I got my rocks up. So he goes back into Gengar. Imagine, imagine. So if he locks and if he's scarfed, right? What do I do? I need Tink for anything now. Like it doesn't help with it. It doesn't help with Sizzle or Quack. It kind of helps with Gramble a bit, but that's it. I think I can just play Sack against Gramble. So I'm going to click Knock. Um, he clicks Shadow Ball. I go Moltres. I do Moltres. Right, do I click Nasty Pot? Do 
like look agility. He's not staying in. There's no wealth he stays in. Fiery Wrath. I mean, he could go Gramble. Nothing on his team switches in to like a Hurricane. If I was like Choice Specs Hurricane right now. Um. Let's click the Hurricane. Because if he goes into Gramble, um, I don't want to miss. Like, I don't want to set up and lose the opportunity. Because I need Moltres now. Hit the Hurricane. We kill it. Nice. That's a Moltres gets a kill. Uh, Tink is dead. Gengar gets a kill. I think this Moltres has got the ability to do so much damage. Like, if he, like, Terra Fairy or something, or not Terra Fairy, if he clicks, like, Dazzle Gleam on my Moltres, like, and I click Agility, it's game. Um... If you Sizzle, what does he click? Steamo. So he goes into this thing. Um, what do you click against me? Can Latios take a hit? Probably not. Um, does this thing learn anything that's super effective? Like, I can't, um, go into, like, low HP, where I die to Bullet Punch, basically. How have I got left? Earth Power, Earthquake, Fire, Haze. You've got Rock Slide, Stone Edge, Wild Charge. You've got a few moves. Um, I'm gonna go Latios. I might, this might be a throw. This might be a throw, but I don't think I can sack anything else. Um, he could explain for her. We live. Is he gonna burn me? No burn. Do I click Draco? Or do I click recover? I click Lust of Purge. How much does Lust of Purge do to this? Um, the Volcanian. 56 to 66. That doesn't die. Draco kills it. It's max HP. Or I recover. Is there anything this thing can do? How much does Sludge Wave do? I'm no bulk in this. And Flamethrower is doing... So little. I'm gonna click recover because he doesn't go Gengar here. Okay, I'm faster. Oh, the full power is huge. Oh my god. Um, do I click the recover or do I click Draco now? I'm clicking Draco now. He stays in. I, I missed, that's fair. Um, he flamed for his game. He gets the burn. You know what? I'll take it because it means there's no power um, on this. You know? You can click recover again. If he goes Gengar here, that's a big play. But I click Draco, like, why would you risk it? I think even if I get into Blastoise and I click flip turn, 
I don't mind too much if I hit give this thing any health because the rocks is basically gonna like nullify that. I do think that I'm gonna have to um, sacrifice my Latios if he goes into Gengar because I need to scarf. Flipping Lost Purge. Um, because he can't do anything to me. And kill, okay. Okay. I have no idea what. So he's not max health. Uh so he might go Gengar here, and risk a speed tie, or he goes Gengar and he's scarfed. So Latios is 2-0. Oh. Um what's he got left? Quack. Gramble's dead. Volcanium's dead. Gengar's got a kill. I got five or four things left. This cause a life list Yeah, I've got five. So it's five to three. Like he must be approaching an endgame here. The fact he hasn't gone Gengar makes me think he could be like choice. And he might not be choice scarfed. Which does mean. How much does? I think if Latios goes down here, I win with Zeb Striker. I think. Because um, I can just flame charge with Terrifier. So I think I play here. He's 252 life or Bullet Punch. Bullet Punch kills me, but I'm just going to click Lust of Purge and get some damage off. He stays in. Damage. We get the spin F drop again. I think the Z is four stars. Okay, that's absolutely fine by me. Um, he'll bullet punch me here. I'm I'm letting Latios die, right? I'm letting Latios die. So I think Moltres cleans up anyway as well. I, I'm in a commanding position. I don't know if this is the best way for me to do it. He bullet punches, which is fine. So, Latios goes down, but Latios, is, Latios was honestly incredible. To, I actually, so I don't know if I've mentioned this in my team builder or not, I actually nearly didn't bring it. Um, if I go into you now, Terrifier, because Flame Charge give me the plus one speed. Um, bullet Punch is not very effective. So if you're Aqua Jump Cradle, then fair. Um, but I should, I'll, let, I'll outspeed any set of Gengar, which I should be able to. I hope I can kill with high horsepower because it's a Gengar. Um, I think it's boots. Um, Zub Striker. High horsepower kills Gengar. Uh, almost even with Max Health. If he's not boots, then high horsepower kills. It's just going to come down to me hitting a Supercell Slam. Like the 95% accurate move. But I think Zeb Striker's in the in the end game position here. Let it let it happen, Nexus. Let it happen. Let it happen. Uh, Scissor was one and zero, not zero and one. Because your Kukwavel can't. Okay, excellent. Um, I think I hope he's not. Uh, Scissor. Well, Plus two, I should have checked this. Bullet Punch doesn't kill me. Quick attacks. Ooh. You flame charge. No Ocker. As long as Zeb Striker isn't blind, we should be good. And I think Moltres might just win. Might just win. Um, so Sizzle's down. Zip Striker gets a KO, and if we lose, it's a 2-0 loss. It will have been a big choke, but it is what it is. It's all going to come down to whether he's got um, 
excuse me, if he's got Aqua Junk, Quavo or not. That's all it's going to come down to. Um, let's check. Do you have Quavo? I, I honestly didn't think he'd have Quick Attack, but actually now like he's clicked it, it makes sense. Um, so Supercell Slam kills Quavo. <clears throat> Even max HP. If it's max defense, Super Slow Slam doesn't necessarily kill. <laughs> I don't see it being. Oh, wait, he's ghost type now, isn't he? He's not ground. I click Super Slow Slam here. And now I just go Moltres after that, right? I forgot he terrored. Oh, that's so close. <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> that's really unfortunate. <sighs> so close to the Zeb Striker sweep at the end. Oh, I've accidentally just opened Photoshop. Didn't want that. But, but, I think we're good. Because we go into you. I have EV'd this to outspeed Quaquable. We click Hurricane and I land and we win. Please. I probably should have clicked Agility there actually. Um, but I have got Haze on Blastoise. So actually, this thing's dead to rocks. So how much does this Shadow Ball do? If I miss the Hurricane, I can click Agility. Oh, that did nothing. Did I throw? Why not click in? I don't know if it's got anything. Aqua Step won't kill me, that's for sure. I don't think close combat will either. So Gengar goes down. I've lost track of how many kills Gengar got. I think it was just the two. Uh, but, come on Moltres, just, just land the hit, that's all you need to do, land the hit. Uh, we click the hurricane and we hit three out of three hurricanes. Go. He could have Ice Spinner, if he's choice scarfed into Ice Spinner though, then I think Blastoise just wins. Like, I really hope I didn't forget to eat out, like, outpace this. Just don't miss the hurricane. Please don't miss hurricane. That's all I ask. Just don't miss the hurricane. Oh, we hit the hurricane. Kill. 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 It lived. Fuck me. Okay. He clicks Aqua Step. Um, live. Go Blastoise. I am Berserk. Oh, if I had a click. He can't. He won't roost. He just won't. Um, I go Blastoise. I want to preserve the differential. This might have been a throw because I have got quick attack on Gliscor, choice band, quick attack. This thing must be so bulky to live that hurricane. Uh, Aqua Step does the square root of nothing to me. I click Earthquake, he can't kill me with any move, and we win 3 0, I think. I'm pretty sure, unless he roosts. But then I just click Haze, and then I eventually flip turn out. Because I am Resto Chest though, so I can like out. He CCs. I live. That's fine. Because I had quick attack, so I would have been able to. Uh, I would have been able to kill this thing uh, in, in response. And we get the 3 0. Nice. Um, that went way better than I expected. Blizzcore didn't even hit the field. Latios just tore him apart. Like the fact that I got that Lust of Purge. Uh, like, Lust of Purge just went crazy. Like. The fact, like, Dio wasn't offensive, I could identify that meant I could just kill the Dio immediately. I was so worried it was going to be Hazard Stack because, yes, I have Blastoise, and I guess I do have uh, Court Change on my Cinderace, so that might deter him. The fact there was no Sandy Shocks, like, Sandy Shocks was really one end or the other. Like, it was either really good against my team, or it was really bad against my team. Like, it couldn't touch Gliscor, it can't touch Latios. His team can't deal with Latios, so it'd be a free switch to Latios every time. Unless he clicks the T-Wave, obviously. Um, Moltres went silly against his team. Um, and I'm really glad that I did bring it as well. Because it was a really good answer to the Gengar. So, um, 
yeah, I think that went really well. I was really nervous at the start of the game, but they went a lot better than I expected. So, yeah, um, that's been week two of the PPL, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. It's the first time I've, I want to say, by the way, it's the first time I've really interacted with Nexus. And he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met and spoken to. And he's also one of the people that when I read his messages, I read them in his voice, which I find hilarious. Um, I'm not that kind of like huge shouty person normally, so when I hear him and I'm just like hearing it in my head, I'm like, yo, I'm, this this is cool. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling now. Thank you for watching this week, guys. We're 2-0 for the season. Week 3, we're up against Drew. Um, again, I'm going to say it now. I don't have a great matchup in that, but we'll see what happens. So thank you for watching, guys, and I'll see you next game. Bye.